A walk can reveal the wonder of Wilcox walls and words. The key to outdoor living may be short and sweet, no big plan, no long trips to the hinterlands, no special equipment, just get up on our feet and walk. And one of the joys of life in geographically and topographically diverse Seattle is that so many enjoyable strolls and vistas beckon outside our doors, a short bus ride or drive away. Among the most cheerful is a 4.74 mile boulevard encircling the crown of Queen Anne Hill. Technically, the scenic route's southwest curve is a continuum of West Highland Drive and 8th Place and 8th Avenue West, but most people probably think of it as the stately street just west of popular Cary Park. One might say the promenade is Queen Anne's version of Alki Beach, or Queen Anne might say vice versa. What makes this corner's panorama possible is what's beneath it, a retaining wall featuring crisscrossing steps and horseshoe arches highlighted by decorative herringbone brick and 60-plus sphere-topped green light standards, a bold infrastructure known by locals as the Wilcox Walls. The name is that of architect and educator Walter Ross Baums Wilcox, who from 1907 to 1922 guided some 60 projects in the Seattle area, mostly residential, but a few more publicly focused, including this massive West Queen Anne hillside undertaking whose construction began in 1913 and finished in 1916. So unusual and simultaneously artistic and functional were the walls that they and the entire boulevard became one of Seattle's first official landmarks in 1976. Thirteen years later, after residents complained of the wall's deterioration, a voter-approved levy funded their restoration. The walls reflected the activist philosophy of Wilcox himself, acquainted with and influenced by famed architects Louis Sullivan and Frank Lloyd Wright, he advocated for consulting engineer Virgil Bogue's visionary 1911 Seattle Comprehensive Plan, which fell to voter defeat in 1912. A selection of Wilcox words taken from the February 16, 1910 Seattle Post-Intelligencer bespeaks an articulate approach, both utilitarian and grand. Open air spaces in the heart of a city as convenient to those who must dwell therein as are the parks and boulevards to the more fortunate make for peace, happiness, and good manners which are conserving forces in the community. A haphazard piecemeal growth of a city defeats economy, efficiency, and uniform contentment while a systematic ensemble encompassing the convenience, comfort, and pleasure of its citizens makes for all these things and results in a city from which those who have prospered largely do not hasten, nor those less fortunate long to depart. It is as if Wilcox were out on a Queen Anne constitutional, talking about today. In our then photo, the Wilcox walls are under construction on April 17, 1914, below 8th Place and 8th Street West. Our second photo is a portrait of Walter Ross Baums Wilcox in 1913. Today, standing on the stairs and boulevard sidewalk of the Wilcox Walls are Queen Anne Historical Society members. From the bottom to the top of the S-shape, Dan Curley, Nicole Demers Shanglo, Maureen Alenga, President, Cindy Hughes, Jan Hadley, Marga Rose Hancock, Julia Hershenson, Leanne Olson, Michael Hershenson, Kathleen Connor, Mary Chapman Cole, and Richard Cole. For more on Wilcox Walls, visit qahistory.org.